Hello, it's James from X-Robot. This is part six of the Batsuit. This series is supported by Ninja Tech, who make NinjaFlex filaments, and this project is built entirely in their filaments. That's Cheetah, Armadillo, and NinjaFlex itself. Last time we put the legs on, and the whole suit's coming together now. There's a few things to tidy up, but today I'm gonna to do the last thing that needs to be done, which is putting the cowl and all the headgear on. This is the last official episode supported by Ninja Tech, but we're still gonna be doing some bat stuff, including the bat board. So there'll be some more gadgets and things added and lots of tidy up to do as we go in the future. My plan for this part is to basically stick bits all over this balaclava. So I'll print lots of smaller pieces with lots of detail on, which all have to be printed flat on the bed. They're all gonna be printed in Ninja Flex and in Cheetah. We'll stick them all over this balaclava it's gonna have some straps and other features like that so it matches the rest of the suit it's my own design and uh, hopefully that'll all work out well but this is quite a tricky part to get right so I started with the sphere and cut it up and scaled it to make a cap for the top of the head and started with a block to make some goggles so as I mentioned all of these are gonna be separate pieces so we need to kind of make sure that I can print those place them all over my head and somehow they still fit together so it looks a bit like Captain America at the moment, but hopefully you can see the resemblance to Batman as well with that nose piece. And obviously once we've got the ears on, it'll look a lot more like Batman. So I'm gonna start by printing these pieces, hoping they're the right scale to fit on my head. I'm pretty sure I got the eye spacing just about right and we'll take it from there. So here are the parts, that's the uh, top of the head there, and that's obviously the eye mask part, which has got these um, pieces in the side here to put straps through, so that'll be sort of a piece that can go on and straps go around the back, so it's pretty much the same style as the rest of the strappy suit. Um, however, I think these things are a bit small, so I haven't cleaned them up too well, there was support material in the eyes. Um, I'm going to put them on my head, and uh, we'll have a look and see what you think. Right, so the idea is that this piece, of course, goes here, it kind of comes down to the eyebrows and that matches the contour of the eye mask which should just fit in there so that doesn't feel too bad on the whole obviously my head's a lot wider than this uh, sort of skull cap piece but the idea is there's the sort of side pieces that are attached to it that have the bat ears on so it does actually fit my head pretty well it is actually the right width although i'm not totally convinced that it's not going to look like i'm wearing a child's uh a child's costume and of course the eye mask can go wider because it's flexible so that can stretch right out and sort of strap over the side pieces so um, I'm not totally sure what to do at the moment I think what we're going to do is design a head and then look at the scale of it measure my head front to back see what we've got and then sort of scale it to that and possibly reprint the parts or not So here's what I've got so far, obviously this is just the upper head, we've still got the lower neck and the jaw and all those things to do, but we need to make sure this fits properly. So uh, basically this back section is one piece, which will all be printed there, and um, I've got some kind of almost gussets here that can expand, so it can be quite stretchy and of course it's printed in flexible material. So um, what we can do now, I think it's on a bit on the small side, is actually measure internally here using the measuring tool and sort of see if that fits. If I take a point right there in front of my eyes and to there for instance, we've got 176 mil, which I think is a bit on the small side. And if we go for the inside from sort of the widest points, perhaps where my ears would be, let's just measure from here to here, we've got, yeah, 144. So probably a bit on the small side, we could do is scaling up a bit, but I'll measure my head and see what we think. Right, so uh, yeah, we've got about 200, 200 mil or 210 mil there if I measure the front of my head to the back. So just need to make sure it's a snug fit for that. I can of course measure the side of my head as well somehow, but I probably need to put the ruler the right way round. Let's see. Well, that says 140, which is why I had, so I wasn't far off. So we'll just scale up a bit, I think, in a little bit in all directions and uh, specifically front to back.
So there it is at last. It did actually take over 80 hours to print. Um, obviously I've taken the support material out, um, which was really needed for that overhang. There's still a couple of bits to clean up on there, but on the whole, uh, pretty happy with that. It's not come out too bad. Look at that print quality. So uh, not too bad there. So I've got the new cap as well that fits in there. I'm just a bit concerned. I might have made it slightly too big. It's kind of square in the top here. Comparing that to uh, the first one, obviously it's significantly bigger. But I'm just gonna put a couple of bolts in there to bolt it together and we'll put it on and see what we need to do. I haven't printed the goggles yet, so uh, that'll be the next thing. I had to print the top of the ears separately because uh, basically it was too tall for the printer. So I'm just gonna use this little gas torch to basically melt that on. So just do this to each half. Should be just like the 3D print bonding to the next piece. Let's get that square, there we go. All right, so those are the two pieces together. It's too big, isn't it? There's quite a lot of room in there, which there really shouldn't be. Um, and obviously my head's quite massive, but at least it doesn't look like a child's one. So I think what I might have to do, I don't really want to reprint this again because it was such a long print. So I'm probably going to reprint this top and just make it slightly narrower to kind of pull this in on my head a bit more. But obviously at the moment that piece sticks out on the brim if I do that. So I need to make a slightly smaller one. That's the easier part to print. I've got the old goggles, which were too small, but if I can get those to be a snug fit and kind of pull the front in as well, then that might not be too bad. So we're just gonna basically pull it all round, um, make these slightly bigger, but not as big as I'd scaled them up to be. And uh, then we might not be too bad. So I printed the bat mask there with um, the V3 jewels. Check out last week's video for a rundown of those and I've used water soluble support. And that should make it much cleaner to remove that support material unlike the last one where the Ninja Flex support material was all kind of bitty because the bonding's really good with that material. Um, this actually doesn't seem to have stuck to the Ninja Flex too well. I can probably break most of that out and then just dissolve away whatever's stuck in there. In fact, there we go, that comes out pretty easily. So that should leave a much cleaner eye line and um, all those other good things. So there's the new top fitted. So hopefully you can see that tapers in at the front and that's the original one, which you can see is just sort of parallel. If I get that the right way around. So that flat size and that tapers in, it pulls the front in. So um, that seems to work quite well with the new mask, which will fit just on there. So I'm gonna put an elastic strap on and um, put it on and hopefully that's gonna fit fine. I'm Batman. There we go, so that seems to fit pretty well. It's actually a pretty snug fit. So you can see that uh, new headpiece has uh, brought the front in there quite a lot and the goggles fit just on there. I've got Velcro on them instead of elastic, but they hold themselves on pretty well through those things at the back. So I think that fits pretty well. It feels pretty snug anyway. So um, yeah, well, now it's time to do something for that chin piece really. It's just got to fit in there and some more of the neck sections. All right, so this is what I've come up with for the chin piece here. So we've got this sort of wraparound piece with a sort of chin uh, recess in there and essentially two straight pieces. And those are gonna fit on around the back and I've got holes there to stitch onto the balaclava to hold that in. And I've kind of taken it round just flat and I think that'll just um, twist around the back. I could put a strap on the back if I need to coax it round. Um, but I think it'll be fine actually because it's gonna be flexible and printed in Ninja Flex. So it should just fit round the back really. And um, I can kind of adjust it to get my jawline to be wherever I need. And here it is. So I've removed all that water soluble support and um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's just shoved in at the moment. I've got the holes to stitch it on, but I haven't actually stitched it to anything. So it's just sort of shoved in the sides and it's held on with friction. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the profile I've got. We do need something at least around the neck at the sides and probably a bit of the front and a sort of collar on the bat suit. So that's the next thing to build. So I wanted to make a collar that fits around here because it's a bit bald around the neck at the moment. So I made this paper template and that fits around like so. So it wraps around the back and comes down to a point at the front. And then I basically traced that and measured it in Fusion 360 and made these out of Ninja Flex. And there's a piece of rigid armadillo at the front that slots in just in behind the chest plate there. 
and these should fit round the back there if we just slot those in like so and that should wrap round to the back but it's a bit stiff so I'm probably going to bend it with heat and I put some holes in the back of that so we can try and attach it together and that should fit in there and wrap round obviously I can't get my head through the hole so we need some sort of latch at the back made of velcro or something so otherwise it looks a bit like Doctor Strange Okay, so I clamped that and let it cool down and um, now it's permanently gone in that shape so they come together much easier and we can stick that onto something at the back. It'll be easy to put behind my neck. So I've bolted that on one side to a piece of armadillo that's rigid and it's printed there. On the other side I've got some 3M dual lock which is like industrial velcro. So that's what holds that on and that sticks on pretty well, it sort of snaps on and um, that holds really firmly in place. All right, so that seems to fit pretty well and it holds itself on snugly and of course that piece pokes down in the front of the chest plate so now we just need something that actually goes around my neck to bridge the gap between the jaw and the collar. So I've designed these neck pieces which are uh, made in two pieces, a front and a back and you can see those overlap and of course they're flexible so hopefully they'll spring out around my neck and they kind of come in here, you'll see this contour comes in and that means they should grip at the sides and not flap around hopefully. Now I need to attach these to the balaclava but the balaclava still needs to stretch at the neck so that I can actually put my head through. So I've put some stitch holes at the front here and also at the back and that hopefully means there's enough stretch in the side of the balaclava that it still fits over my head. So we're going to print those in cheetah, stitch them on and see how well it works. All right, here they are. So uh, obviously those are really flexible. Well, they're still quite rigid enough that um, they're not gonna go all weird and go in the wrong place around my neck. So they should hold some shape. We're gonna stick the back one inside the front one like that. And of course we've got those stitch holes so we can attach it to the balaclava. And hopefully that allows that stretch at the sides. There we go. So I use Velcro in the end to hold those on so I can reposition them slightly if I need to. But uh, altogether that seems to fit pretty well. So obviously my neck can still move and everything's good because those are all separate sections. So let's put all of it on. I am Batman. I am him. So I'm pretty happy that that looks pretty much in proportion to the rest of the suit and it's not uh, like too big or too small or like I'm a bobblehead or something. So uh, just give a spin there. I haven't got the rest of the suit on. I'm just wearing a t-shirt because it's really hot here. So yeah, pretty good. I can move my neck and I've got all that flexibility that Batman really wanted in one of the Dark Knight things when he lost the big cowl and just got these neck sections. So I'm pretty happy with that. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how it looks after all this. It's taken a couple of weeks, as you noticed, to get the video done to fit all the parts and design them and wait for those 80 hour prints. But I'm pretty happy with what we've got in the end. But the video's not over. Well, actually it is the end of the video, but it's not the end of the bat suit, because as I said at the beginning, we're going to carry on doing bat projects. And that's going to involve doing fill-in sections on the suit, like those thigh pieces that are a bit blank, maybe looking at the undersuit again, whether we add 3D printed fabric or we get another textured undersuit or a screen print or something like that, or whatever we happen to do. We've got some more sections on those thighs that I left places to put bat gadgets, and I'm bringing back the bat board, which of course has Ninja Flex tyres, so check out that series. I'm going to learn to weld and do some welding on it and then hopefully I can drive it a lot better dressed as Batman. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more on this and some of the other projects. Alright that's all for now.